walked straight across the valley in front of me, 30 meters away. So close and so clear. Hello everyone, my name is Vander and welcome to Vander Explains. In today's episode of Cryptid Chronicles, we will take a look at the case of Indonesia's mysterious ape man known as the Orang Pendek. The story begins on the island of Sumatra, Indonesia, deep within the heart of the Sumatran rainforest surrounding the massive landscape of Mount Kerinci. Mount Kerinci is the highest mountain in Sumatra and is also the highest active volcano in Southeast Asia. It is roughly 3,800 meters tall above sea level. This mountain sits between the provinces of West Sumatra and Jambi between the South Solok and Kerinci Regency. And as you can see, the area is surrounded by dense and luscious tropical rainforests. Mount Kerinci is also a part of Sumatra's largest national park called Taman Nasional Kerinci Seblat. This national park is a part of four regional provinces in Sumatra and is roughly 1.4 million hectares wide. In comparison, it is about one and one-third times the size of the island of Hawaii, three times the size of Grand Canyon National Park, or just about half the size of Belgium. Numerous sightings and encounters of the Orang Pendek were reported along the trails of the national park. Just imagine the size of this unexplored land and what could lie deep within the forest. Now, before diving into the Orang Pendek story, we should first understand how rich in flora and fauna the area is. Some of the well-known wildlife that are found here are animals like the Sumatran tiger, the famous red ape known as the orangutan, the siamang gibbon, the Malayan tapir, and the sun bear. More often than not, claims of orang pendek sightings are just cases of misidentifying the animals mentioned previously. Scouring through plenty of stories, I have included some of the most compelling testimonials and accounts of orang pendek sightings. Now let's begin. The name Orang Pendek, which means short people, is a name given by the indigenous homeowners of the forests known as Suku Anak Dalam. Suku Anak Dalam, which literally translates to Tribe of the Inner Children, are forest-dwelling nomads who have traditionally lived throughout the lowland forests of Jambi and South Sumatra. According to the legends, the Orang Pendek has been a part of their world and co-inhabitant of the forest for centuries. These nomads would often know when they're entering Orang Pendek's territory and they will sometimes leave offerings of tobacco to keep Orang Pendek content. Other than the Suku Anak Dalam, the tale of the Orang Pendek has been shared and told by the local villagers living on the outskirts of the mountain. Most of these locals have very strong beliefs and tradition of the supernatural, mystical, and unexplainable. They would tell tales of the Orang Pendek in scary detail and often warn explorers not to venture too deep within the forests, especially not at night. Some villagers have passed down stories of the Orang Pendek and said that they would sometimes sneak up on unsuspecting individuals who have entered their territory and at a moment's notice strike them at their head, cracking their skulls open to consume their brains. Others claim that their feet are backwards facing, making it hard for people to track them. Till this day, there have been nine people who have mysteriously vanished or have been declared dead while exploring Mount Kerinci. Even though some of these cases have been proven to be caused by extreme weather conditions and unstable terrain, some locals truly believe that Orang Pendek was responsible for some of these disappearances. Although these claims should be taken with a grain of salt, there are numerous first-hand accounts made by these locals and they firmly believe that Orang Pendek exists somewhere in Mount Kerinci. As you may or may not know, Indonesia was previously colonized by the Dutch since the early 1600s before declaring their independence in 1945. Some of the most well-known documentations of Orang Pendek sightings were made by Dutch settlers. One of the earliest documented encounters occurred in 1910. The encounter was transcribed by the then governor of Sumatra, Louis Constant Westenegg. He recalled the encounter made by a young local who was employed as an overseer for Mr. Van Heerwarden. One day, this local and several other workers ventured into the forests near Lubuk Selasik when out of the sudden he saw, quote, some 15 meters away, a large creature, low on its feet, which ran like a man. It was very hairy and was not an orangutan. 
but its face was not like an ordinary man's." Unquote. A few years later, in 1917, a coffee plantation owner named Mr. Oosting had an encounter of his own. While out exploring the forest thickets, Oosting spotted a very strange creature moving through the woods. He said, quote, The creature's body was as large as a medium-sized native, and he had thick, square shoulders, not sloping at all. The color was not brown but looked like black earth. The creature took several paces and quietly sprang into a tree. It was not an orangutan. It was more like a monstrously large siamang, but a siamang has long hair and there was no doubt it had short hair. I did not see the face for indeed it never once looked at me." Unquote. And finally, one of the most detailed accounts of orang panic sightings was documented by a Dutch settler named J. Van Heerwarden in 1923. One afternoon, Van Heerwarden decided to scour the forest to hunt for wild boar. As the hours went by and with no luck, he decided to go into hiding for about an hour. He soon realized that it was late and that the locals had warned him not to journey through the woods after sundown. However, just as he was about to leave, he noticed a slight rustling of leaves from the corner of his eye. Tempted by curiosity, he decided to investigate further and saw a strange creature on top of a tree. He said, quote, I discovered a dark and hairy creature on a branch, the front of its body pressed tightly against the tree. It looked as if it was trying to make itself inconspicuous. It must be Orang Pendek. At first, I merely watched and examined the beast, which still clung motionless to the tree." Unquote. Van Heerwarden kept his gun ready to fire and tried to attract the creature's attention by calling to it. He then began to kick the tree trunk, but the creature did not respond. He dropped his gun and slowly climbed up the tree when suddenly the creature lifted itself from the branch. Van Heerwarden got down and glanced at the creature, and for the first time, he was able to clearly see what it looked like. He saw its hair, forehead, and a pair of eyes staring right at him. He noticed that the creature was also hairy in the front of its body, and the dark hair fell almost down to its waist. He then vividly described the creature, quote, Its brown face was almost hairless. Its eyebrows were very bushy. The eyes were very lively, much like human eyes. The width of its mouth was strikingly wide when open. Its canine showed clearly from time to time. The color of its teeth were yellowish-white. Its hands were slightly hairy on the back. Had it been standing, its arms would have leached a little above its knees. But its legs seemed to be rather short. The specimen was about five foot high. There was nothing repulsive or ugly about its face, nor was it at all ape-like." He then walked closer to the creature, slowly lifting his gun. As he raised his gun, the creature uttered a loud groan, which was answered by similar echoes in the forests nearby. It then sprang across the tree line before dropping ten feet to the ground and scurrying away. If what Van Heerwarden said was actually true, then this is what the Orang Pendek would have looked like. Recently, in the early 2000s, several documentaries about the Orang Pendek were made. These documentaries showed expeditions in the 1990s by scientists, photographers, and explorers such as Debbie Marder, Jeremy Holden, and Adam Davies. The footage you are about to see is one of many expeditions conducted by Debbie Marder and her team. I'm just walking between these two trees, vegetation to about hip level. This gorgeous, graceful, very strongly built primate, big ape, walking out of a legend and into broad daylight lit up by the sun. And the disbelief of seeing this thing. And if I'd seen it in the concealed in undergrowth, I could have said, well, I saw something. But I didn't see something. I saw an orang pendek walk across a valley just 30 meters away from me. Based on their first-hand accounts, orang pendek is definitely a bipedal primate with a very defined upper body that was approximately three to four feet tall. Jeremy Holden was initially skeptical about orang pendek but when he saw the creature himself in 1994, he became a believer. Because of this encounter, he decided to set camera traps around the national park. He managed to capture rare footage of several endangered animals, but ironically, the creature that he saw with his own two eyes was never caught on camera. Some of the only evidence ever found was a footprint that was measured and casted by Adam Davies. The foot was roughly 5 to 6 inches long and 4 inches wide. 
several scientists are convinced that this could definitely be a new species of animal, since no existing primate had feet of that shape and size. However, skeptics say that these footprints could be those of an injured or deformed primate. Several hair samples were also collected and sent to the lab for identification. Sadly, the lab results returned inconclusive, which indicated that the hair samples might have been contaminated. With that said, let's look into several theories that might explain or disprove the existence of Orang Pendek. Our first theory is that the Orang Pendek could be a human-like hominid related to Homo floresiensis. Homo floresiensis, nicknamed the Hobbit, is one of the most recently discovered human species. Human remains found in the island of Flores in 2003 proved that Homo floresiensis was indeed a new species in the genus Homo that lived about 100,000 to 50,000 years ago. The female skeleton found in 2003 was measured to be roughly 3 feet and 6 inches tall. It was described to have a flat face, narrow nose, wide pelvis, long arms, large jaws, and large teeth. These features certainly match first-hand depictions of Orang Pendek made by the locals and Dutch settlers. One issue with this theory is that the island of Flores, where the remains of Homo floresiensis were found, is roughly 1,400 miles away from Mount Kerinci. Could this mean that Orang Pendek is a different subspecies of the genus Homo, or could the early Homo floresiensis travel across lands and settled in what is now Kerinci Seblat National Park? Our second theory is that Orang Pendek could be a lost or unknown orangutan species. Just recently, in November 2017, a new orangutan species was officially announced. Named the Tapanuli orangutan, these orangutans have slightly smaller skulls but larger canines, compared to those of the Sumatran orangutans. They also have flatter faces, frizzier hair, and shorter joints. They are approximately a foot smaller compared to their Sumatran cousins, males being under 5 foot tall and females under 4 foot. These measurements of the Tapanuli orangutan eerily corroborates Van Heerwarden's detailed depictions of Orang Pendek's size and canines. There are roughly only about 800 Tapanuli orangutans left in the wild, and it is considered the rarest apes on the planet. Could Orang Pendek actually be Tapanuli orangutan, or maybe another undiscovered age species? Or could it be an entirely different creature still waiting to be discovered? Our third and final theory suggests that Orang Pendek is actually a group of indigenous people referred to as the uncontacted people. These people live in voluntary isolation without any contact with the rest of the world. There are numerous groups of uncontacted people living in places such as the Sentinel Islands, Papua New Guinea, and several across South America. Although most of the people just want to live their lives in complete isolation, some are known to be extremely hostile towards outsiders. On one occasion in 2018, when an American missionary named John attempted to travel to the Sentinel Islands, he was met with an unforeseen violence which ultimately led to his death. Several fishermen spotted John's body lying dead on the island's shore, and government's attempt to try and retrieve his body was also unsuccessful. So could the mysterious Orang Pendek actually be a group of uncontacted people living deep inside the forests of Sumatra? To this day, we still lack concrete evidence to prove or disprove the existence of Orang Pendek. Will we ever find out the truth about Indonesia's mysterious Bigfoot? Is it all just legends and tales, or is there some truth behind the stories? Leave a comment down below and let me know what your theories and opinions are. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you're looking for more content just like this, please consider subscribing to the channel and turn on channel notifications. This is Vander, and I'll see you on the next one.